What up, bros, and welcome to the All Bros Podcast. I'm Jonathan. Nah, I'm Caleb. And we are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we'll be talking about some adventures in hunting. With Pops, we got some DC coming out, as well as a certain uh, feline pop. I <laughs> uh, got a little... Got some... D- I don't know how to like tease this shit. Anyway... <laughs> We got some stuttering. Yeah, we got some <laughs> stuttering. Uh, we got a Hot Topic exclusive coming out, as well as another Spider-Man pop. Uh, and then um, and two more Marvel pops after that. Uh, Blu-rays, we got nothing uh, this week. Uh, and then this week's Sneak Peeks, we'll be talking about a teaser that I am so, so pumped about. Um, nothing for what's in the box. Um not surprising anyone. So after that, we'll be moving on to our main event of the evening, which Caleb, you did not change the name of. Ah, gosh, damn it! And you know what's really funny? I forgot the name of this movie. <laughs> it's called Late Night. Thank you. I'll fix that. <laughs> Thank you. Um. So yeah. So after all that, we'll be moving on to our main event of the evening, which will be our breakdown. Of the movie uh, Late Night, which uh, is, I believe, an Amazon original movie, isn't it? Amazon. Yes. Yes. Amazon um, Studios. I don't think it was. A, well, well, that makes sense. It was. So it is exclusive to Amazon, um, Amazon Prime people. Um, but it was released in theaters. Oh, okay. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm assuming it was, considering it was released back in 2019. True. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that will be this week's uh, episode. So what do you say we get started? Let's do it. Hey everyone, you found our new podcast called Exploring Kodawari. I'm Luke, I'm a classical trumpet player and sitting here next to my fiance, Yanka. Hi, I'm Yanka. I'm a classical violinist. She's pretty good too. Um, I think I'm probably going to put your playing in the background of this. Very exciting. You're our intro music. <laughs> Very exciting. You're going to be okay. famous. <laughs> um, so this this uh, podcast is going to be exploring this word Kodawari. I think we were all pretty bored during COVID-19, and we wanted something to help us focus on the staying on the path, developing, learning new things. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to dedicate a podcast towards exploring Kodawari in the world. Which means um, pursuing a perfection in a craft that we can't really achieve or arrive basically into that perfection it's one of those japanese concept words that means a whole paragraph of meaning it's hard to define very succinctly but it basically means pursuing the ideal all the while knowing you can't get there so we want to interview people we want to do various topics and just kind of explore this motivational energy in the world so we hope you'll join us and subscribe check out our website exploring kodawari.blog we have articles up there and all sorts of things and we hope you'll listen yes bye bye Alright, so first up with Adventures in Hunting. Following in Marvel's footsteps, DC is releasing their own line of Black, black Light um, Funko Pops, but which is different about these. These will be released to Hot Topic instead of Target. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Which different mean, store, different... Yes, but this also might mean that they're a little easier to find, because I know people had a hard-ass time trying to find the Marvel ones at Target. Yeah. Um, so, I was just trying to find the uh, Captain America one and had a bitch of a time finding it. Yeah. I tried to find the Spider-Man one, but then I realized, oh, wait, you have to buy a shirt if you want to get that one. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. The shirt was cool. It, it was. was. almost worth it. Yeah, but <laughs> I would have only gotten it if you wanted the shirt. I would have wanted the shirt. Oh, gosh damn. I never <laughs> found it. So, But good to know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so first off in this line, we got the Joker. Not surprising anyone. Nope. Uh, along with Batman. And then last but not least, Harley Quinn. I'm sure they're going to come out with a lot more. I'm assuming Superman, Aquaman, Cyborg, Wonder Woman. 
Yeah, but those don't really lend themselves to becoming blacklight, I feel. Like, Cyborg would be a tough one to make That's blacklight. True. Oh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern would be really cool. They better do Green Lantern. Um, Flash would be, I think, easy to do. Flash would look really good. Yeah. Um, ooh, Martian Manhunter would look ooh, really good. Yes. Um, honestly, I think Mr. Freeze would look killer. Okay, that would look pretty cool. You think the penguin could work? Or nah. Penguin would be tough because yeah. he's in a a suit. That's true. Yeah, Fair unfortunately. Enough. Yeah, not all um, Batman villains lend themselves to becoming uh, blacklight. That's true. What about Robin? Robin would be cool. <laughs> um. Ooh, I was gonna say Nightwing, but Nightwing would be difficult. Yeah. Unless they went with like the classic look. Um, I, I'd feel I would rather them just do Robin and call it a day. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> this Batman's really cool though. It kinda has a Adam West vibe to it. It does. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Just cause like the, the little eyebrows thing. I agree with that. Yeah. It but that little... figure makes him look yeah, chunky. it looks yeah, it looks a little <laughs> chunky. Looks like COVID really hit him, or quarantine, whatever. I think it might just be the angle too, yeah, because it's like looking down on him. So I don't know in the box and even on the picture from the box, he kind of does look a little chunky. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Are are we trying to like fat shame Batman? Yeah. Yes. All right. That is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what? I'm cool with this. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, next up, we got Grumpy Cat. Funko Pops coming. Uh, and we are going to have two flocked uh, Grumpy Cats. One, okay, so one is just like a common Grumpy Cat. Uh, next up, we'll have that exact same one, but flocked. And that will be an Entertainment Earth exclusive. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just wanting to look at them. Set. Yeah, it's like the exact same yeah. thing. But then we'll also have another uh, entertainment exclusive flocked, which is kind of like, I guess the fur is like a little lighter of a gray, or is that darker of a gray? Yeah, it goes from like yellowish tan to yeah. like a really light gray. So I think that one looks better. Yeah, that one looks like Grumpy Cat. Yeah, this one doesn't. Like, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. But anyway, what do I, what do I know? I don't collect. I, I almost said I don't collect Funko Pops. I do. I don't make Funko Pops. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. I feel like we'd do really good at it. We would. Like oh, we'd come up with figures that people actually want. <laughs> Dude, straight. Yeah. Okay. Here's a better look at Batman. He straight up is fat. Damn. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, but he has like that Adam West build where he's not like fat, but he's not built either. Yeah. All right, I can give you that. Uh, next up, we have a Hot Topic exclusive, and it is Scooby-Doo, and it is him scarfing down some Scooby Snacks. Hales? Yes. So this, I freaking love this figure. I know. This one's so cool. Yeah. It's so much fun. They better do the exact same one with Shaggy. Like, come on. Shaggy's known for eating a lot of Scooby Snacks as well. That'd be cool. Like, so, they better. Just saying. Um, next up... We have Cyborg Spider-Man, which is going to be a Walgreens exclusive. Uh, there is no set date when this will be coming out, so when we, f we find out a date, we'll let you guys know in a future episode. Yeah. It might, I mean, just keep your eyes open at Walgreens, because yeah. those seem, I feel like those release dates are inaccurate. You know, Because fair. I've seen... So, like certain figures in store and then i've seen on the the funko site saying like release today this figure and i'm like i saw that like yesterday <laughs> yeah like the hell um all right uh next up after that we have the punisher in thanos form or thanos in punisher form That's hells funny. yes <laughs> this actually looks pretty cool this is dope so, do you know the storyline for this? I don't. So, this is a different Earth's Thanos if Thanos were raised by the Punisher. So, this is what Cosmic Than or Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah. 
when he so instead of like so he's trying to like save the world so he goes to kill thanos um instead thanos like freaking punches him in the face and so he has to like chain him to him like his body so that's where we get the cosmic ghost rider figure okay or that stance like it's on the the comic book um and yeah and so the watchers are trying to get punisher to like actually kill baby thanos and they're like he's like why would i do that and yeah and then like suddenly out of freaking nowhere uh thanos all grown up raised by the punisher comes out <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the future is so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting uh, that they uh, took the uh, head from MCU Thanos. A little bit, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the exact same head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was depressing. <laughs> I went to go look at my wall, and all of my figures are packed away because we're, me and the, uh, the misses are moving. So I went to go look at my Thanos, and it's gone. <laughs> Ah, so <laughs> depressing. Oh, that bummed me out way more than I thought it was going Aww. to. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad to think that this is the last episode we're filming in this room. It doesn't bum me out that much. <laughs> I feel it would it it would bum me out more if this was where the All Bros started, but it started back at your old place. Yeah, that's yeah. It would really bum me out if that was the case. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like we got more of a what's the word. I feel like eventually, like, we'll get to the point where we can have, like, an official studio, and then yeah. if we have to move from there, that's going to freaking bum me out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moving from here doesn't as much. Okay. that That's good. That's always good to hear. Um, all right. Uh, after Punisher Thanos, we have King Deadpool, which, so, uh, Punisher Thanos is a PX exclusive as well as King Deadpool. Yeah, so that's going to end up at, like, an FYE, isn't it? Yep. Or at your like local comic book shops, I think. I yeah. think that's where it ends up as well. So yeah. here's King Deadpool. Uh on freaking his, dope. <laughs> on his throne with I don't know what the hell that is. I'm gonna say Kraken or like octopus looking thing, but I'm gonna say Kraken. Because it doesn't Kraken say it on cool. the box, it just says King Deadpool. Yeah. This is cool. This one's a cool. really cool figure. It is very kind of cool. gives me the uh, Game of Thrones vibes. It kind of does, like at least his pose. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can agree with that. But it's super cool, love it. I love how the Kraken's under the uh, like the royal carpet. Yeah, that's <laughs> way cool. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Uh it's almost like because the eyes kind of disconnected. It's almost like some sort of like tentacle monster. Yeah. Kind of giving me some tentacle monster vibes All instead right. of like a, a Kraken. I can, okay, I can give you that. But super cool figure. It is. It is very cool. Yeah, if I see this one, I I want to see it in person, but I might have a hard time saying no to getting that. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs> if Caleb doesn't report back with this pop, he's in big trouble. Yep. Um, so like I said, uh, there's nothing with Blu-rays. Well, there is one release. If you guys are interested, uh, they're doing the 4K release for V for Vendetta. Um, and that will also have a uh, Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. So if you guys want to go pick that up, I'd go for it. The Steelbook's pretty, pretty nice. I'm tempted to pick it up, even though I haven't seen V for Vendetta. It's a good movie. I've heard so. Yeah. I would, Damn it. I would I dare will. say Natalie Portman's best. Shit. Okay. Well. Man. Top performances, I'll say. Maybe you just talked me into it. Yeah. Gotcha. And Hugo Weaving, too. He's freaking incredible. Oh, he's in it? Yeah, he's uh, V. Spoiler. I'm just kidding. It doesn't show him. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I just didn't know that. That's so. common knowledge at this point. I didn't Why are know you that. trying to shame me? Well, I thought it was a spoiler, okay? so It's not a spoiler. So eat my ass. No, nope. bite me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, before this gets any more sexual, I'm just what? kidding. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell uh, are you talking I'm about? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Whew, all right. <laughs> all right. I'm not looking at you anymore. <laughs> all right. 
you know what? Fair. All right, moving on to this week's sneak peeks. We got another teaser for Halloween Kills. Um, so this was premiered with the uh, Blumhouse Fan Fest, and you're looking at me. You said you weren't going to. Really? I'm just kidding. I'm Shut kidding. the hell I'm up. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so today, uh, Blumhouse hosted a, a Fan Fest live kind of thing on their Facebook and Twitter, and I don't know if it was on Instagram. Um, but anyway, so they had the cast of uh, Halloween Kills. Um, in uh, they announced that uh, they're doing doing Insidious Chapter Five. Jeez. Yeah, I know, right? Um, they didn't uh, showcase anything for the next Purge movie, which I was kind of surprised with, because that does come out uh, this coming summer. Really? Yeah. So yeah, they're coming out. The That's Purge. really surprising. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of shocked, and they they released a trailer for Halloween Kills, but not the next Purge. Yeah, so, I bet we get that in the next couple of weeks, or get some sort of news from it. Yeah, I just want to see what angle they're going to take with this one. It'd be really funny if they're waiting till to see who wins the election. To, oh my gosh! <laughs> to showcase like that say, would make sense. Say like they uh, have two different teaser posters. They yeah, that that's gonna depend on who wins. <laughs> that would make so much sense. It really would. Um. But anyway, so back to, so back to that. Uh, I forget how long it was, but uh, it seemed pretty cool. Um, but during this, um, I don't know if it was David Gordon Green or Jason Blum or even Jamie Lee Curtis uh, that released this new teaser trailer for Halloween Kills. And holy shit, it's amazing. Yeah, it's quick. It's super quick. Like you, I probably am going to watch this in slow motion or like reduce. The I mean, speed. I've. I've watched it probably. I'm not proud to say like ten times. It makes sense. It's it's like that's not like a shameful thing. It's quick. Every, yeah. Like it's very quick paced, and it's short. Like so I had to watch because um, there's a part after Michael picks up his mask, and all of a sudden you just see him freaking take his butcher knife and just slash it across someone's face, and it's such a quick shot that I had to like go back and watch it like three times. I'm like, gosh, damn, Michael. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know how to slow down the speed on YouTube? Yeah. I don't. So it's just like in the options. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. But you can Good do time. it's uh, the playback speed. Oh, okay. So you can reduce that down. Like a lot of people, um, I know that there's like a whole YouTube channel dedicated to it, but they watch movies at 0.25 speed. So like a quarter of the speed uh. that the, yeah. So they watch the whole movie and then. It gives them enough time to read the like the subtitles. It gives them enough time to like find different little hidden treasures in movies. I mean, and so then they kudos. release what they found in the in the footage. Kudos to them, but I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, dude, I think their most recent video they did Avengers Endgame. Oh goodness! So I know they don't do. I don't think they do it at like one whole like one whole section. Yeah, I think they like watch it for a couple hours, and then. Um, like take notes on what they've seen and different things. Okay. Like, cause um, I know they did it for Infinity War, and they were do- making a lot of references to things that tied into like, oh, this is a similar line to th- from this movie, and it's really interesting to watch. And then they'll play back the scene so you can like, oh, that's pretty cool. See it. Like, I'll have to show you a, a video or two yeah. of theirs. Sweet. Yeah, it was either Endgame that was their most recent or Deadpool two. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna find their channel real quick while you keep talking, okay. so I can actually like reference them and give them credit. Okay. All right. So anyway, so in this trailer, like Caleb said, it's very very quick. It's only about thirty three seconds, so about the same time as the last teaser that we got. Um, but uh, it kind of opens with Lori explaining when um. Uh, when night falls and you're alone, he comes for you. Uh, on this night, he kills. And you see Michael pick up his mask, and then, like I said, he does the whole knife slash to someone's face. And you just get, like, montages of different characters. You see Tommy Doyle. Um, you see Lori. Um, I think you see Lindsay as well. And then you see, um, I forget the nurse's name from uh, the first, uh, from the original Halloween. Um, shit. She's a cha- she's a pretty chain. She's a chain smoker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so just get quick, quick glimpses. Um, 
No, I don't think. I mean, you get we actually get a pretty good uh, look at uh, the burned mask, and it looks pretty damn good. I'm very excited to see this in yeah, action. I'm very happy with this mask. I am too. Um, yeah. So real quick, it's the Canadian lad on YouTube. Okay. Um. So his most recent video, which was released two days ago, uh, was Spider Man Three. Oh. Uh, watching that at point two five speed. Okay. Um, then Deadpool, uh, Endgame, Joker. But it looks like he's done most Marvel movies. But he also like breaks down like trailers. So he's did, done the one for WandaVision. Um, Into the Spider Verse, he's done. And yeah, just a bu- like all. It seems like he's done like most of the Marvel movies, Spider Man movies, uh, like the Tobey Maguire ones. Huh. And yeah, and also does like little news things. And his videos are fairly short. Yeah, I was gonna say, how long are they? Um, so his like news um segments or his news videos are like four or five minutes. Okay. Um, his watching movies at a really slow speed. Endgame was ten minutes. Oh. Deadpool was eight, and Spider Man three was six. Wow. So they his are videos short. are fairly short. Yeah, he's way shorter than CinemaSins. Yeah, CinemaSins is up to like what, fifteen, twenty minutes. Sometimes thirty. I've seen sometimes them push 30. thirty. I think it just depends on the movie. Yeah, I mean, usually I feel if they're pushing thirty, they'll split it into two parts. Yeah, but go check out Canadian Lad. Uh, his videos are really cool. I'm actually going to subscribe to him right now. So look at Caleb doing the good work. Damn right, <laughs> got to do my part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, I don't, do you have anything else to say about the Halloween Kills the second nope. teaser? I'm really excited for it. Um, I think that we saw a lot of exciting things. We did, but it doesn't give anything away, which is really, really good. Which is yeah, really which cool. is absolutely what you want from a horror film. Yeah. Um, at least something like this, where it's going to be like a trilogy situation, yeah. or it's a quad, I guess. If you're because this is like a, it's so cool, like. I love like the how Halloween works, where they have these different timelines that you can watch. Yeah, because you can watch like one, two, and four, I guess. So because three doesn't include Michael at no, all. No, so if you're going with the original timeline, it's one, two, four, five, and six. Yeah, and then there's uh, another timeline is one, two, H two O Resurrection, and then there's this timeline which will be um, the original. Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. Yeah. I freaking love that shit. I, I do, too. And then they have the Rob Zombie version, and I think that's its own timeline, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people don't like to talk about those movies. Are they really that bad? The first... I like the first one. I I, I don't love it. I, I like... I don't know. I like his take on Michael, even though like he kind of like ruins why Michael's so mysterious, like why he does what he does. Um, but then he tries to do something so different in Halloween 2 that I think it kind of blows up in his face and it does not work. Mm. There, Gosh, I need to get my hands on those movies. I, I wish I had digital copies for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. I, I, I'm really excited to, to watch it because I love watch like these multiple timelines things. I like, I'm so crazy about that stuff. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> There's a lot to do with white horses, and it's really dumb. Yeah, okay. You'll see. You'll see. You've intrigued me. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Um, But, yeah, so that's the teaser for Halloween Kills. Please go check it out if you guys haven't. It's incredible. Hills, yes. Gosh, I'm so excited for this movie. Um, but, so that's it for... Um, Adventures in Hunting and uh, Sneak Peeks. So, what do you say we move on to this uh, main event of the evening? Let's do it. All right. Time for the main event. It's main event time. Let's play game. All right, so... For this week's main event of the evening, we'll be talking about the movie Late Night, starring Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling. Kaling. Thank you. I almost forgot about her. <laughs> I don't know how I almost did. 
She's an amazing, amazing actress. Yeah. I was expecting this movie to be a lot cheesier than it was. I did, too. I did not expect it to get as serious as it did. Like, damn. Yeah. Very much so. Um, unfortunately, and I apologize for this, there's probably not going to be a question. So there's not a question of the week for this one. Um, just because with the move and everything, I couldn't find the time to make the picture. Um, I'll try to find a way so I can do it on my phone from now on. Because I always remember, but it's always like at night after Iris has gone to bed and my computer is in her room. Dude, honestly, do you want me to start doing the... Um... Well, it's just like the... Like it's it's, you... it's super easy to make. Okay. It's like it's not difficult to make at all. It's just well, I'm on like, my computer, and you, I'm like, eh. I feel you do so much for the All Bros that like I want to take off at least any stress I can from you. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm more I'm, than happy. We'll, to we'll do talk it. after. Okay. okay, we'll talk after. Okay, sounds good. All right, plot time. Um. Yeah, after I explain what we're doing. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, if you are new to our breakdown system we have split movies into eight different categories that we individually grade to come to a final all bros score um and that comes out as a percentage and a letter grade um and we get pretty specific on the letter grade we do um so yeah um we'll talk about all of those but the eight categories that we get into are story writing acting character development effects music costumes and then at the very end give it our own personal grade uh so yeah and that gives us our average and also gives us our letter grade so we kind of know in what category it sits with every other movie that we've broken down yep uh, so with that, Rose is going to spoil the entire movie if you have not seen it. So you've been warned. Uh, so let's get straight into it with the story. All right. So Catherine Newberry is an acclaimed late night talk show host with an extensive career in comedy, but her show's ratings have seen a steady decline over the past decade. The network's president, Caroline Morton, tells Catherine to fix up her show or she will be replaced. In an att- Okay, wait, what? Oh, she tells her she's out. She is being replaced. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, In an attempt to revamp the show, Catherine has Molly Patel hired to her writing staff, mainly on the basis that she is an Indian-American woman, while all remaining writers are white men. Although Molly has little experience in comedy and initially struggles, she proves her worth by giving Catherine a good... Uh, material to work with on her show as well as ideas on how to reach out to a bigger audience the results prove successful Catherine learns which ones so i just want to take a second so the only reason that mindy's character gets hired is because she or because uh what's her name um emma thompson's character Catherine. uh yes Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. yeah Catherine. yeah she only gets hired on because Catherine gets accused of hating women yep (laughs) <laughs> and she just really wants a woman, so yeah. And she's apparently a super hard ass, and I love that she like that Mindy's character. What's her name? Name? Um, shit. Uh, Molly. Molly. I love that Molly. She so she just hasn't done really anything involving like TV shows. She works in quality assurance. Yeah. That, or that, quality that. control or something like that. And she I love that her ideas work because that's the job. Like her that's her job. She's supposed to make sure that things work. Yeah. So when things are failing, she needs to figure out what's failing to make it work again. Yeah. And I love that that's the the route that they took with her. <laughs> Cuz I mean, they could have made it like super cheesy like that she just had like a day in day out factory job. That's true. But it I love that they gave her a skill that was useful to Catherine. I agree. That Instead of nice. just being like random hire. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how uh, Catherine's assistant is like so hesitant on hiring her. Her Molly, he's just like, yeah, this really is not going well. But Catherine is like so insistent on hiring a woman. She's just like, I don't care who she is or 
what she is, just freaking hire her. Yeah, and she's just like, fine, fine, <laughs> I got it. You're hired. <laughs> uh, uh, Catherine learns that Car- Caroline wants to pick young, popular comedian Daniel Tennant to replace her as the new host. Catherine resists as Daniel's comedy is vulgar and miso- misogynistic. I did it. You got it. Yep. I almost <laughs> failed. Reading with Rose. <laughs> I need a theme song for you, dude. Shut up, asshole. <laughs> uh, with backup from her writers, Catherine defies the network's demands and decides on air to continue her career. An email from one of the writers, Charlie, gets leaked in which it is revealed that Catherine had an affair with Charlie about after her husband, Walter, was initially diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. disease. Wow. In the midst of the drama, Catherine fires Molly when she tells her she is acting poorly in the wake of the news. Eventually, Catherine uh, makes amends with Walter and the other writers and admits her affair to her audience. And admit, wow, admits, admits, <laughs> admits her affair to her audience. Her sincerity and passion for the show convinces Caroline to let her stick around, and Catherine later apologizes to Molly and hires her back. One year later, the show's team has diversified. Molly is promoted to co-lead monologue writer, and Catherine's show is more successful than ever. Hell yeah. 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 Um, I feel like the story flowed really well. I absolutely agree. I feel like there was a cup, a few slow spots. Um, okay, what did you think were the slow spots? Well, for one, it was... I think the interaction with between Molly and one of the writers that she was th- with the office. Okay. I feel like that went on a bit long. And there was just like other instances where it's just like, okay, let's move on to the next story plot. I did like though with uh, how you're speaking with the, um, the person, the guy that she was sharing the office with. I do like how during this scene, she's like hanging stuff up on her side and um, he's, uh, I think he's been there for like over 20 years. And he's just like, I don't put anything because I can get fired at any moment. But then towards the ending, when she's about to take down our, I think her, um, was it like Believe poster or something? Some like sort that? of inspirational poster, yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's like, you know, actually, can you keep that up? Uh, I've gotten used to it and I like it. Oh. Yeah, I'm like. Freaking that's, sweet. That's the weed. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of like those heartwarming moments and a lot of like funny moments. I yeah. I feel like comedically and we'll get into this with writing, comedically it started off a bit slow. I I can I can agree with that. But it got funnier as time went on. Do you um at all uh wish Ike Barinholtz was in it at all anymore or do you think he was in it? I really much? like Ike Barinholtz, but I think he was in it just enough. Okay. Um yeah, I think the they should have made a bigger deal on what his name was. Yeah, because I when they started saying who uh, Catherine's replacement was going to be, and they're like David Tennant, I'm like, or not David Tennant, Daniel Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, we're bringing in Doctor Wrong Tennant. <laughs> no, so when they started saying like, oh, Daniel Tennant, I w- was so confused on who that was. I w- like they pro. I feel like they should have put because like. Catherine was watching his special um, in public. I feel like they should have put his name behind him or something. Made it more like outstanding what his name was. Because when they started announcing who this was, and she's just like, absolutely not. I'm like, why are you so pissed? Yeah, exactly. And then when I figured out who it was, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that starts to make sense. Because I actually asked you. I'm like, who's Daniel Tennant? <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, and then you like reminded me. You're like, "Oh, that's the the comedian." And I'm like, "Oh, that's right." <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. What are you thinking? Um, about like a solid eighty five. An eighty five? Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, I really think that's fair. Um, it's Damn. it's a fairly strong story, but it it's just. It, it has does have moments. a little bit of a slow start. Yeah. I feel I feel to me that's the best way to 
def- define it. It has a slow start, but once it gets its treading, it just takes off. Yeah, absolutely. Or traction, whatever the hell you want to say. All right, so f- moving on to writing. Caleb, how do you feel writing was for this movie? Okay. So, seems like he's got I, we, a story to okay, tell. Okay, no. This. So, we got into this a little bit um already. K- s- slow start. Yes. But the s- writing is super smart, I feel. There's a lot of jokes that I feel if you weren't paying attention could fly over your head. I can definitely And like that. really solid jokes too. Um honestly, I feel like the the worst written stuff was the comedic bits. Yeah. Oh, I and it, like and so for those of you who haven't seen this movie that decided to listen to this anyway, I'm talking like uh there's com- comedy shows. So um Daniel's or Daniel Tennant's character has a stand-up special. His jokes kind of suck. They're not super well written. Yeah. Um Catherine at the be- at I think the beginning, she, she's at an award show. I think so. Yeah, she's getting an award show for like an American host thing. And she's like, she talks with a British accent. And so she's making a joke about that. Comedy comes in threes, not fives. <laughs> but it's just like joke after joke. And people are like laughing their ass off. I'm like, why? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give him this. I did think the funniest part about like, oh, you're giving uh, the best uh, comedic talk show host to an English woman. I feel there might be a little bit of a problem there, America. That was yeah, pretty funny. That was funny. Yeah. It's just that she kept building on that already funny joke. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, you're running this joke into the ground. Let's let's, let's stop now. Yeah. And like I said, comedy comes in threes. You you make a reference, you make another reference, you make another reference, you're done. Yeah. That's it. That's how like a lot of my comedian the comedians that I like to listen to, that's how they write their jokes. They don't drive a freaking they don't drive a joke until it's not funny anymore. And that's what was happening. They took that joke that was a fairly well written joke. Yeah. And just made it unfunny yeah. with how much they were just like digging into it. I, I absolutely agree. Like they went with like a tickle to a freaking gut punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that stuff did not work for me at all. Cause I, like I said, I'm no comedian. I don't understand the intricacies of being a comedian. I listen I to a lot of their shows, um, like podcasts or their specials, and I can kind of piece together how they w- they make their joke. Yeah. And there's a lot of building up to a joke, and I feel like there's like with this where they there was like these comedic specials um, or s- stand up. I- uh, portions, I'll say. So, like with Daniel Tennant's character, Catherine's character at the uh, the award show. Um, later down the line, where she kind of does a tries to do a bit at the uh, cancer isn't funny uh, yes. show with Molly. Those jokes just don't land, and I think that's partially due to Emma Thompson, and it's hard to dock her for this and and this is like i'll get into acting it's hard to dock her for something that she's not familiar with she's a good actress she's an amazing actress yeah she is a not very good stand-up comedian no i mean i i don't know i feel like a lot of actors maybe aren't and it's just i feel that comedy on screen in a movie is way different than stand-up comedy i mean absolutely it's already written for you yeah. Whereas stand up, you got to come up with that shit on your own. Yeah. Well, I know. So, like with comedy specials, yeah, they write their show. It's just a matter of delivery. Yes, that's true. And yeah, so like the, if the delivery sucks, a well written joke doesn't mean shit. Like um, one um, kind of one actor that kind of comes to mind with that, like uh, Friends with uh, Chandler. I feel a lot of the jokes that come from Chandler would not be as funny if it weren't for Matthew Perry's perform or delivery. That's fair. Um, 
I have a lot of issues with that show. <laughs> like, I feel like that show wouldn't be as funny or considered as funny if it weren't for the freaking laugh track. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, <laughs> Emily refuses to watch that show because of the laugh track. She think it's she thinks it's freaking annoying. Yeah, because it's like every other sentence. Yeah. I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. But I just think that's really funny that that's the that's the reason why she refuses to watch Friends. Yeah, dude, th- have I told you about that picture? So if someone like uh, it's like a meme, but someone posted a picture and says, "If I had an infinite amount of funds, I would buy the rights to Friends and remove the laugh tracks from every single episode, so everyone can see how uneffing funny this show is." <laughs> dude, and it's true. Like if if you I enjoy the show a lot more when I'm tired and ready to shut my brain off. Okay. Because I'm just like, I'm not going to think about anything right now. I'm just going to like have this going on in the background. And I think Friends is hilarious in, in those moments. But when I'm like fully awake yeah. and ready to like take in content, yeah. Friends is the worst. <laughs> I absolutely hate Friends. <laughs> I can't remember. Does the Big Bang Theory have a laugh track? Yes. Gosh damn it. Yeah. Um, that has some issues too. Early seasons, pretty good. Yeah. Later seasons, freaking suck. Le- they they rely so heavily on the laugh track. Have you watched Young Sheldon? That show is funny. Right. I haven't watched. I haven't like fully watched it. I watched clips. Dude, it's really good. I finished. Um, I'm all caught up, and they finally announced that they're doing a season four, and I can't freaking wait. Yeah, I love that show. It's so freaking funny. The cast is amazing. But uh, sorry, let's get back to this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of critiquing comedy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's hard because deli- it's delivery, and the part of the delivery. I have a theory about that scene with the award show. Okay. I am willing to bet you that. Um, Emma Thompson was performing on a like to no, to no one, and they were adding in the laughter. And the reason I'm thinking that is because comedy, or most comedy shows that I've seen or specials, it's talk, 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 joke, punchline, laughter, and then you'll you'll see the. The comedian pauses, yeah. gives them enough time to laugh. Emma Thompson didn't do that. It was joke after joke after joke with laughs over it. Comedians did, don't do that. Didn't they get shots of the audience, though, in the movie? I don't think so. I thought I saw at least one shot. I know they did some, like, scattered shots, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, behind her or anything. So, like, showing oh, that yeah, she was no, in front. Oh, yeah, no, it wasn't. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think it was a... It was like a TV thing that we were watching. Yeah. Like a, or yeah, like a TV clip. So it was all focused on her. So that's what I think it, it happened. Because there was no good reason why people should have been laughing. That's a good and theory. no good reasons why she could have should have kept going and going and going. Yeah. Because she had nothing to go off of. And that's not a, a thing on her. That I think that's a, a writing issue. Or a, kind of a directorial issue. That he, she, minimally... Minimally, they should have had her. That's not the right word, but I'm going to go with it. All right. <laughs> um, they should have had her in front of a small audience. Yeah. That way she could have worked off of their energy. Because that's what comedians do. They just work off the energy of the crowd. If a that's crowd, because I think a, a good crowd, a good crowd with a well-written show is a good show. It could be a great show. A bad crowd with an amazingly written show is a shitty show. Yeah. Because if you're working off of the energy of the crowd, and if the crowd isn't giving you good feedback or good energy back, you ha- you have nothing to work off of. It's true. And I think that's what what sucks about comedy and what's so difficult about comedy and why I praise the people that can do it. Yeah. Like, but it's not guys. for everyone. No, and it's... for Emma Thompson it's definitely not for you. 
but that may not be her fault. She could have just been set up for failure, and they could have just done the overlay track, like laugh track. True. That's a good point. Which I, I feel they did, and it, it's also... A, so, I'm docking for the writing, because okay. joke after joke after joke just does not work. Yeah. And it wasn't even, like, a joke. It was just, like, punchlines, I would feel. Kind it's just was. like, here, funny line, funny line, funny line. It's just working off of the one joke that worked yeah. well. Yeah. They could have left that, like, the joke at that. Been like, there's something wrong here. And laugh track. And called it at that. <laughs> but nope. But they were, like, giving her a laugh track, like, you're the funniest person on earth. It's like, no, honey, sorry, that's Jack Black. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it didn't work. Uh, I, unfortunately, I'm I'm a little lower with the the writing, like eighty, high seventies. Okay, seventy seven. I can do seventy seven. Like, what is that around what you were you were at, or where were you thinking? I mean, I was thinking like seventy eight. Seventy eight. Yeah, I can give you seventy eight. Okay. I can I can be a little kinder, <laughs> just because it's Emma Thompson. Just because it's Emma Thompson, and I don't necessarily. I well, I'll give it because a lot of the uh, the writing later on very strong. Okay. Um, and I think so. This movie has a very like female empowerment vibe it does, to it which was awesome but, but it doesn't throw it in your face like freaking charlie's angels yeah so let's not talk about that movie yeah um go listen to our breakdown of that <laughs> if you want uh that way you can to ignore, save yourself some time yeah exactly <laughs> well, you can ignore the movie in its entirety hell yeah it didn't throw that in your face yeah. and it didn't make men out to be the bad guys like yeah, thank goodness. I think it made men, like, they didn't ask to be in that position. No. They just were. Yeah. And it's not like that they were against women in the workplace. They just wanted them to be cool. I think that was, like, the most issue. Like, there was, like, some light hazing, I would say. Trying to, like, get a vibe for what Molly was like yeah or if she, was she going to be uppity or we, are we going to still be able to make these jokes at work even though they're highly inappropriate and especially all that the other whole stuff. thing with like the girls bathroom that they use that to go number two in because yeah the only girl there was <laughs> uh oh shit what's Emma thompson's character's name uh catherine catherine she was the only girl there before and she never used the bathrooms in that vicinity so yeah that was, that was a pretty funny joke yeah that was a really good joke um, but yeah, I, unfortunately, it's just the comedic bits that bring it down a lot, and I think the performance bits were a little off too. It's and listening. it's not that they weren't well written. Yeah, it's just it's a mixture of the performance and the writing. Okay. Um, the writing I feel was a bit on the bland side with yeah. with those performance bits. Okay. Um, everything else, like went behind the scenes stuff or everything that wasn't in front of a camera being performed for someone, yeah, was fantastic. Everything that was not so fantastic. Yeah. Unfortunately, those parts do bring it down significantly. Yeah. So seventy-eight, I think, is more than fair. All right, perfect. All right, next up we got acting. So I think we can just do Emma Thompson, Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling. Yep. Perfect. All right, uh, Mindy Kaling first, or should we do Emma Thompson first? Say Mindy Kaling. Okay. Um, I think Cat or uh, Emma Thompson was a bigger part. I, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Even though the movie was kind of more focused around Mo Mindy. Yeah, Molly's character. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we could either we could start with either or, yeah. but we'll we can start off with. Uh, with Mindy. Okay. Um, overall, I think she did really good in this movie. Um, I don't know, but she, I really uh, haven't seen Mindy Kaling in a lot of movies. I haven't either. Like, I've seen her in a lot of shows. Yeah, um, like The Office, The Mindy Project, 
such like that. That's awesome. She had her own show, but like honestly, the only movie that comes to mind that she had a like huge role in, and she was a voiceover for it, was Inside Out when she played Disgust. She was Disgust. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah that's she cool. Played Disgust. She did a really good job in she that. Did. She did. Um, but yeah, so like when I think of like other movies she's been in, really only comes to like smaller roles. Like, um, have you seen um, oh, what was it? Um, the night. Uh, that's Christmas movie with Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Anthony Mackie. Is that the night before? Yeah, the night before. Um, do you, I have uh, not seen that. Did I send you the digital code for that? You have. I've just not watched okay. it yet. This holiday so, season, you definitely got to watch it. It's yeah, really I'm good. not going to watch it before Thanksgiving. <laughs> just, fair. just so you're aware. No, that that's fine. That's fair. Uh, but, but super like raunchy holiday movie. It's 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 a fun time. I love that kind of shit. Yeah. But, you know, she, she small role in that. And, you know, like, I, I wish that she had more movie roles because she's a very good actress and she's she's great here. I, I loved yeah. her in this role. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure she helped write some of this. That's I want to say she got an act or a, not an acting credit because, duh, um, I think she got a writing credit. If not, I think she was at least a producer on it. Let's find out. She wrote it. She wrote it? Yep, written by Mindy Kaling. Well done, Mindy. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Like I said, some of the performance stuff was a little iffy. But I think that's also... I don't think Mindy ever did stand-up. I don't think so. So that might be part of the issue. I would have personally called in a stand-up comedian Yeah. to kind of consult. Fair. Um, I mean, not saying, like, we don't know how this works, so she very well may have, but we're just assuming. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she, yeah, she did a f- pretty damn good job. Yeah. She, uh, her emotional parts were really, really good. Like, um, really funny too. That, that one scene where she shows up to the one guy's house and has a bottle of wine and I don't know, she, she basically gets turned out, not turned down, but she's just like. Oh my gosh, you have another girl over. I can't believe I fell for it. And just you're just like the, you feel bad, but you can't help but laugh because of the way it's played out. Because it's so like <laughs> Ah, we knew it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it was showcased at the beginning of like how he plays ladies and how he has a certain plan and you fell for it, Mindy. Yeah. Like, my favorite scene of hers is when she is yelled at <laughs> by Catherine and goes and hides under her desk <laughs> to oh, cry. <laughs> like, Whoa. I freaking loved that because, I mean, she, like, her first go to was the bathroom, but then she found out someone was in there and he's just like, or no, someone followed her yeah, in. He's... And then he's like, I'm sorry, I really got to go. And she's just like, eh, and leaves. And then I'm like, okay. Because my first guess was bathroom. Yeah. And then after she left, I'm like, mm, she's going to go under her desk. And she did. And it was hilarious. Predictable, but funny. Caleb actually uh, had a, a good change of pace for uh, one scene uh, with Mindy Kaling. There's a part where uh, one guy gets fired. Because uh, in this scene, Mindy Kaling doesn't have a chair to sit on. So she grabs a trash can and sits on that. And so in the movie... Um, this guy gets fired and yada yada yada, and then Mindy Kaling finally speaks up and she's just like, "Can I t- can I take the fireman's chair?" <laughs> but Caleb actually had a really good replacement, and he thought it'd be really funny as this all is going down as he's getting fired. Mindy Kaling just slides into the chair, <laughs> <laughs> and I feel that would have been honestly like a lot funnier just just like watching her like like ink it's like what's the word Incons- inconspicuously yeah just just, just sliding on in chair. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would have laughed my ass off. I would just have that, too. Because like, they asked, they're like, oh, whose chair is this? And they're like, oh, it's this guy. And then someone's like, oh, this guy got fired. And so, yeah, I would have just had her like, everyone like being like, what? What the hell? And then like, yeah, her sliding into the, the chair. That would have been a really good change. So. That would have been hilarious. So kudos to you for coming up with that. That was a good yeah. idea. I, I don't have very many like situational things I feel can improve movies. Yeah. But I think that would have been one that would have just added a little extra I, something. I absolutely agree. Um, 
But yeah, I, I do still enjoy how sh- they pulled that yeah, off with they, her. Yeah, they still pulled it off very, very well. Very, very great. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. Like I said, really enjoyed her performance. Very few issues with her. Yeah, I hardly had any. Yeah, I think her performances, like her, the when she was doing jokes, were a little bit stronger than Emma Thompson's. I feel this is Mindy Kaling has a lot more practice with comedy. Yeah. So, what are you thinking with her? Definitely in the nineties. In the nineties. Yeah. I'm on the lower end. Okay. Like um, I'm but yeah, like I thought she ninety three. Ninety three. I can give you ninety three. All right. All right, next up, we have Emma Thompson, who played uh, Catherine. Hell yeah. Loved her. I, I love Emma Thompson. I don't know what it is, but she can play the bitchy type so well. Like, this... Um, I think it's the accent. Uh, you know what? Fair <laughs> enough. Because I think this... we, us Americans are just like, freaking bitchy-ass British people. <laughs> <laughs> So there's this, and then there's uh, her performance as P.L. Travers in uh, Saving Mr. Banks, which, to date, that's still my favorite performance of hers. Um, but just sorry, just want to point that out. Um, but overall, she is she's fantastic in this yeah. movie. She's I she's love great. her. I love her so much. Yeah, she's um, for the most part, uh, except for in this with the stand up stand-up parts she nails her comedy quite well i feel um yeah. her um emotional moments are amazing with um wow what's his name that plays her husband john isn't it john something i forgot his name uh, and you were giving me shit for not knowing his name on when we watched this movie i know but i i <sighs> john like lithgow I could... that's it yeah well no you said something with his name you just got like the first name wrong, and I'm like, no, his name's John. And you're oh, like, oh yeah, that's right. Oh okay. Yeah. So I didn't know his full name. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, the emotional part where they're um kind of, I think they're actually on her stage, and um he's finally confronting her about the uh, affair, and the the way that um he finally forgives her, um and how she like falls into his arms and just their conversation alone is just so emotional it's so impactful and really really well acted by both especially emma thompson yeah i think i've much preferred her comedy that was behind the scenes so like the funny lines that she had that weren't performance art yes Um, i can definitely agree with that so like whenever she was on her show i didn't quite think her Bits were quite that funny. Yeah. Um, but everything behind the scenes was really good. I absolutely the way that agree. she'd like bitch at people or was how hilarious. Fact, how the fact that she d- she uh, refused to know people's names. So one, for <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah. And Mending Kaling was eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I love that stuff. Um, Honestly, unfortunately, I don't think she did as well as Mindy. You know what? I absolutely agree, actually. I I do think Mindy's stronger in this movie than her. Yeah. But how much stronger? I would give... Uh, I would give Emma Thompson like a 91. You'd still give her in the 90s? Yeah. I'm like high 80s. Okay, how about we like meet in the middle with like eighty nine? I can give you eighty nine. Okay. Just I'm giving you eighty nine just because I love Emma Thompson. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that averages us out to ninety one. Hey, the initial grade I was gonna give her. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh next up we got character development. So I think we're gonna do Catherine. Yeah. Um, pretty strong, I would say. You start off kind of hating her, just because of the way she treats her team and just all this shit. And I mean, she treats her husband fine, so at least there's that. Um, but just watching her, you know, be not the greatest person to other people, 
um, seeing how she reacts to her getting kicked off the show, how she handles that, how she tries to uh, um, come back from that and make the show better, but then she hits another um, incline uh, with uh, the whole um, cheating scandal on her husband, um, but then from there, she's finally able to make it to the top, and her uh, show is picked back, well, not picked back up, but she is reinstated as host, um, and it's more popular than ever before. Yeah. I... This is one of those movies that gets the development of the character right. I absolutely agree. Because if you listen back to our episode on, about Capone, our biggest issue with that is that you never see the downfall of the main character. Yes. you ha- like It's just down and down and down, and you're just like, gosh, like you never get to see this guy at the top. Yeah. And like really understand the weight of what's happening to him in this moment. With this, you do. Like she's like kind of plateaued at the bottom. Like she's just like, it's like not doing anything to make her show better. She's not doing anything to make it worse. She's just kind of like flattening out. Yeah. Which is not good for character. No, it's not. And... And I'm not like saying like character development, just good for anyone's character in general. Yeah. Um, you never want to plateau, you always want to try to keep working upward. And with her, you get to see her like sm- small little moments, but clips and everyone talking about, oh, how great your show was. And like, I loved your show for this long, and it's just gotten kind of bad from here. And or it's just not as good as it once was. And I think that's a little disheartening to her. And she's just like, well, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and even her husband is just like, yeah, your show sucks. <laughs> like, no wonder that, like, it's a surprise they've kept you on this long. It's like, thanks for being subtle, babe. Yeah. And, like, she didn't real like, it's, it's kind of like that plateau. You don't realize you're on that plateau. Until someone points it out. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, yeah. And then she tries to do what she needs to to correct it in maybe not the most healthy ways. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she works her way up back into popularity, back into the public eye, kind of gains the public's favor again. And then this, when this scandal hits, it's like that, that roadblock, and then it drops her again, and you feel that. Because you're like, oh my gosh, she was working so hard for that. And seeing it just slip from her fingers, it really kind of hurts. It does. Absolutely. And I think this was, out of a lot of movies that we've done, this is one of the better character arcs. Oh, absolutely. I'm trying to compare it to a character arc that is this good. Can you think of any off the top of your head? (sighs) Honestly, I would throw in throw this probably in line with um like Iron Man's from the Ooh. first movie. Okay. Obviously it's not as epic as yeah. his was, but like you get to see the downfall, like the what this guy man was to and then the downfall of what he becomes and then what he creates from that. And that's kind of what happens with her. You see her at the top um, in these like short little clips, but she's like not as great, yeah. And so she's just kind of below level, and then you see her build herself up and then crash. And so I'd say comparable to Iron Man. I wouldn't say it's as great though. Okay. I'd say it's like a, maybe a, a couple notches below that. All right. I can agree with that absolutely. Yeah. So what are you thinking? I don't know, I'm thinking like solid eighty. Solid eighty? Yeah. I'm I'm like a little higher, maybe. Okay. Like not okay. much. I'm not like quite eighty five, but I'm like eighty two, eighty three. I can give you either of those, whichever you wanna go. I'll with. go eighty two. Okay. Yeah, because I think uh oh, what the hell? Put eighty five on accident. My bad. I saw nothing. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got effects, which 
I'll go with sets because okay. we're, like we're, we did say we were going to start including sets. Yes, the sets looked amazing. They did. Her um her, what is it? The chair that the uh, guests sit in on her show looked comfortable as hell. Yeah, I think they <laughs> made a really good kind of like a a pretty decent mixture between I'd say like James Corden and uh, Jimmy Fallon. Okay. I was like kind go of with Conan. But yeah, Conan. Oh yeah, I forgot about Conan. Yeah, I'd say yeah. I I would go with that instead. James I'd say Corden and James Corden and Conan. Conan. And Conan. Yeah, uh, just that set. It, I think they had a hard time setting up the scale of the state or the the set. Yeah, because the set seemed very small. It did for yeah for a late night talk show. It, yeah, it like you very, don't get to see small. very much. Of, like you see her set up. A little bit. You see where the um, monologue writer kind of stands. Yeah. And not much else. No. I mean, and you, you kind of see the band a little bit, but they yeah. seem very clumped together. Yeah. It's like, can you guys really not afford to have a bigger space? It's way too small. Yeah. Especially for one of the more popular. Yeah. That's been going um, on for how long? Yeah. So that that kind of pulled me out of it a little bit because that was something I like noticed immediately yeah. i'm like oh her stage is small <laughs> yeah I, I absolutely agree um other than that everything else like all the other stages it seemed like a very small set for this movie it did everything was set in either the office space um you got like a really short clip of her of mindy in her apartment uh you see Catherine's house um the set and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's that's literally all you see in this movie. So, I mean, not much in way of set design, but, I mean, it worked. It did, yeah. Um, I don't think they did any stunts. Actually, I think I pointed out that there was one stunt man. <laughs> I forgot which part was that. It was during the credits. Like It was just like stunts and one oh, name yeah. yeah i forgot about that <laughs> and i forget who the freaking stunt was yeah. i don't know if it was anyone yeah i can't, I can't remember but yeah it, like if you watch this movie wait till you see the stunts it's just stunts one name <laughs> <laughs> so whoever did the stunts in this movie fantastic we didn't even realize you were there bravo bravo um yeah so Going off his set design, a little bit more average. I'd say 80s. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. So just flat 80? Yeah, I'd give us flat 80. Cool. All right, next up we got music. Oh, nothing really stuck out to me. Yeah, not really. Um, her theme song was like, okay, nothing special. There's no Conan O'Brien theme. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, it wasn't anything grand. What are you thinking? I don't know if I should say like I don't know, like a six? Is that too low? No. Okay. I was I was thinking like five. So six. Yeah, we'll go with six. Okay. Alright, costumes. Costumes are pretty damn good. Yeah. Not like Rocket Man level costumes, no, but but for what they were going with for, um, pretty, pretty I'd say pretty solid. Um, I really liked all of Catherine's wardrobe. Molly's wardrobe was really yeah. good. I think they killed it with Catherine's wardrobe. Oh yeah. Um, and I I liked how they pointed out with Molly, um, when I think it was the monologue writer that was pointing it out to her. He's just like, yeah, well, like, why would I take advice from someone who overdresses for work? <laughs> <laughs> but it was true. She's always, like, very well put together, and the other guys typically aren't. They're, like, in T-shirts or just, like, button-ups or whatever. Yeah, I mean, for the, yeah, for the most part, they just wore slacks, button-ups. Some of them wore, like, a, a vest or a sweater over. But, yeah, none ever came to work with a suit coat on. Yeah. At least from what I saw. Did you see any with a suit coat? Not till the end. Yeah. Um, there was a lot more that were in suits at the end. Okay. Yeah, I see. So, so other than that. Costumes were pretty solid. Like, yeah, I'm 
I would say above average. I'm not quite at an eight yet. I, I could be talked up if you wanted to. I, but. I mean, I don't really have anything that extra that I can really say, so I'm I can totally go with a seven. Seven. Yeah. Cool. All right. Last up, uh, personal grade. Uh, do you want to go first, or do you want me to? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Um, I thought this movie was going to be a lot cheesier than it ended up being. Um, I actually really enjoyed this movie. Um, probably one I'm going to check out again, uh, in the future. Um, loved M- Mindy Cowling. I loved Emma Thompson. I think they did an amazing job. I loved that they did a female empowerment message without shitting on men. That was like my biggest uh, Ghostbusters pro. 2016. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> Absolutely no joke. Um, Even though it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to probably get so much hate for saying that. Probably. <laughs> but yeah, it's... It's good. It's a really solid movie. Um, very few issues with it. I think it's very smartly written. Like it has these awkward moments when someone's performing and trying to be funny, and that kind of pulls me out of it. But overall, I I really enjoyed this. But so I'm I'm going to give it a solid eighty. Um, like Caleb, really really enjoyed this. Honestly. Um, when and if this movie does come to Blu-ray, because there are no plans for a Blu-ray release just because this is an Amazon Studio-owned film now, um, so I don't know if they'll, uh, they will actually do a physical format release, but if they do, I will definitely be buying the Blu-ray. Um, Mindy Kaling, did you say Calling? How did you pronounce her last name? I thought I said Kaling. No, you said I said Calling? Yeah, Calling. Yeah. Wow. Okay. My bad. So Mindy Calling. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Screw you. (laughs) So Mindy Calling and Emma Thompson were fantastic. Really good chemistry. Loved those two um, on on film. For however the hell to say it, whatever. Supporting cast was really good. Um, Story was really good. Can't say enough good about this. Um, I'm actually gonna agree with you. Eighty. Hell's yeah. Alrighty, and that brings us to our final grade which is sorry i really can't clap i got a cut on my finger thanks to him whatever screw you (laughs) you you asked to help (laughs) fair all right fair yeah so the final grade for late night is a b minus not bad not bad at all yeah definitely not bad um it's sitting at an 81.3 percent okay um, so like, is that like a pretty solid B minus? Is that at all close to a B? Uh, let me see what the cutoff is. Okay. It's a pretty sturdy B minus. So the B minus cutoff is an eighty. Oh okay. Um, and then a solid B is an eighty three. Okay, so, so yeah, it's so it's, it's, like a, right it's a middle. little it's a little on the softer side. Yeah, okay. But not bad. Yeah, not, not bad at all. Um, comparing this to other movies, so everything I'm about to list off is a B minus movie. Um, just so you can kind of see how it compares to our other movies. Um, so this is one percent lower than The Hunt. Okay, that's fair. I did. I think I did enjoy that movie a little more. Yeah, it is a little bit. It's actually. Damn near right in line with Deadpool 2. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. What killed Deadpool 2 for us was the uh, story. Yeah, fair. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, It's 1% lower than The Greatest Showman. Would you agree with that, or would you rank this higher than The Greatest Showman? I might have liked The Greatest Showman a bit more. Okay. Fair enough. Um, pretty much in line with Birds of Prey. Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, ooh. It's 0.8% lower than It Chapter 2. Hmm. Alright. Yeah, it's 1% higher than Good Boys. 
Okay. Going through. Let's see what other movies we got. Oh, there it is. It is 1% lower than Let's Be Cops. I'd probably rank it a little higher, honestly. But that's a little bit. Me. I feel what kills, to me, what kills Let's Be Cops is the whole mob shit. It feels so unnecessary in that movie. Yeah, and it's and it's pretty much in line with Rogue One. Okay. So, not bad. That's all of our yeah. B-minus movies. Not bad at all. Um, so, I think it's it fits in with a pretty decent bundle. I would agree. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyway, that concludes this week's breakdown. Um... Like we said, great movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, but yeah. Anyway, if you liked this episode and want to hear more of our stuff, be sure to follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are damn near everywhere. <laughs> um, if we're not somewhere, let me know. Because that would shock the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, you can also catch all of our episodes on YouTube as well. Um, be sure to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the All Bros. Uh, you can DM us if you have an episode idea, want to answer our question of the week, uh, which there should be one next week, um, or if you want to join us, we would love to have you on. Yes, we would. Um, obviously you need to come in with a movie idea, but <laughs> we can figure all that shit out. Uh, you can also email us if you wanted to at the Albros channel, gmail.com. Uh, go check out our website, tinyurl.com slash the Albros, where you can go find links to everything that we do, our podcast, our YouTube channel, um, or a merch store, which is on T Public, so tpublic.com slash user slash the all bros channel is where you can shout out. I don't know if you're listening, but shout out to whoever who bought that uh, Monster House Dreamcast shirt. Yeah, you we get notifications of what you buy, we don't know who, yeah, or where it goes, or any of that information. We just know that you bought a shirt with the Monster's House, and we appreciate the shit out of yes, you. You do real MVP. <laughs> Anyway, so with that, uh, next week will be another breakdown. We will be breaking down Marriage Story, a Netflix original movie. Yes. Does so, that star Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver? Yep. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be... Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Look forward to that next week, and until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And I'll catch you guys next week. Deuces. So long. I'm glad it's back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, last week sucked. Oh, screw you. (laughs)